Hi, I'm Wouter from Triply and this is part 9 of my Sparkle tutorial. Today I will introduce various ways of returning strings and also HTML presentations to the user from a Sparkle query. This will be quite an hands-on episode. We will start out with a simple Sparkle query that we already know from a previous episode and then we will add additional bindings to it in order to add this visual layer or this visual representation if you like that we can then additionally return to the user or to the using application. This is the query that we start out with. It uh, only uses things already introduced in, uh, in previous episodes so it's probably quite uh, recognizable. We are querying for a Pokemon in our Pokemon knowledge graph and then we want to have the color, the cry, the name and the image of the Pokemon and we only return the color, cry, name and image back in the projection so we do not return the Pokemon identifier itself and these are prefix declarations that allow us to write things in a more concise manner in the rest of the query. And finally, the modifier specifies that we only want to see the first 10 results. Let's take a brief look at the table. Indeed, let's put it on table view. So indeed, we have a color, a cry, a name and an image column. And all of these contain literals. Colors and names are so-called simple strings. They don't have an explicit data type IRI. Cry and image are of data type XSD or XML schema data type, any URI. So far, so good. Now, if we want to add some additional text here, we already saw this in an earlier episode, uh, episode four, where we introduced specifying additional bindings. Take a look at episode four if you are not yet familiar with the bind keyword. And with the bind, we can introduce an arbitrary string, for instance, the greeting hi, and we can bind it to a variable text like that. And then it appears in the tabular result. Now, what we can also do in this bind is we can apply one or more functions. There are several functions that apply specifically to strings. And I will introduce one of them that is particularly useful in, in many, many different situations, which is the concatenation function. Because it very often occurs in Sparkle that you have different strings. For instance, you have the string hi, you have a maybe a space character that you want to intersperse, and then maybe you have uh, everyone, maybe you want to say hi to everyone, something like this. So this means that you have now the concatenation function which takes one or more arguments of the string form and in this case the high space and everyone string and it combines all of them together in one big string and this one big string is then bound to the text variable so let's take a look uh, you see that we run out of space a bit in the table so I'm going to remove the cry from the projection and also the image from the projection and that gives us a little bit more space in the table and now we can see indeed hi everyone is now bound to variable text nice now it's of course more useful to put some content in the text uh, in the text string that is actually coming from the rest of the query so instead of saying hi everyone we could say hi and then the name of the pokemon so then we would put question mark name here and this will actually work because as you can see in the name column the names of the Pokemons all happen to be simple strings so the simple string can directly be inserted in the concatenation function and can therefore also be bound to the text variable that's nice now this text is a simple string, but what if we have some widget that we want to return and the widget is not supposed to be a simple string, but it's supposed to be a literal term with an explicit data type IRI. An example of this might be if we want to return uh, a year in the, in the Gregorian calendar. Uh, so if we want to return the year 2020, we can return it like this with the regular notation for literals with caret caret and then a data type IRI 
and we can bind that to the widget and if we then go to the table you can see that actually now we have bound to the widget variable we have bound to it these literals which denote 2020 which should be interpreted as a g year where the g again stands for gregorian the the commonly used calendar so far so good so we can also do these kinds of things now the question is of course this string over here can we apply string modification functions in order to initialize it let's take a look at that so suppose that 2020 was not a full string but we actually had two substrings and we had to compose them so we had say one string 202 and then we had another string 0 and we have to first concatenate those together in order to then produce the year literal but as you can see on the left hand side this uh, warning indicator this is not syntactically correct so that's a bit of a bit of a shame let me quickly mention that this is an error so you should not be typing this line at all this is incorrect sparkle let me also comment it out instead what you should do is you should use the strdt function the strdt function takes a string and the data type iri and returns a literal term so let's take a look if we put here the string 2020 and then the data type iri xsd j year this returns exactly the same thing that our original widget used to return you can see what it does so it composes a string out of a string and the data type iri it composes this literal nice and strdt is a little bit uglier because you can no longer use the the regular literal notation the the caret caret notation for literals so that's a bit of a shame However, it's also more flexible because this notation does allow us to compose this together with other functions. So we can first compose the string out of 202 and 0, and then we compose the literal term. So this allows us to do multiple steps in a, in a sort of nested fashion that is very common in, in many programming languages. So if we run this, we can see we get exactly the same result. Now, there's a special data type that is very useful. It's part of the RDF standard and it's defined within the RDF namespace. And that data type is RDF HTML. And it denotes a string of HTML markup. So let's see whether we can use that as the binding to our widget. So instead of binding a year, let's see whether we can bind something of data type RDF HTML so then we can use the concatenation function in order to build some HTML string so I could do something like this I could have two strings this is the closing bracket and this is the opening bracket of the, the header an HTML header and then in there I can put the value of something that's coming from my query in this case the name of the of the Pokemon let's take a look so similar to the text variable where I was binding hi and then the name of the Pokemon, I can also put the name of the Pokemon inside these tags and I must then also specify this as RDF HTML. So this is now interpreted as RDF HTML. Now inside the TripleDB uh, feature set, you actually have this tab for the gallery where you can immediately take a look at the HTML rendering. Uh, not all triple stores have this, but uh, this is uh, only a visual layer, of course. Every Sparkle endpoint is able to return these kinds of HTML literals. Okay, nice. However, uh, we have some more things going on here. Not only the name of the Pokemon, but also its color. And you can actually set this with uh, CSS. So CSS allows you to add in HTML a style annotation. And then in the style annotation, you can introduce a color. This is a little bit clunky because I now have to concatenate the, the color in there while also 
making sure that I have all of the brackets right. So I'm now using single brackets uh, for the value of the HTML attribute, the value of the style attribute, and I'm using double quotes to specify the different string components of my Sparkle, uh, of my, my literal term that I'm using in Sparkle. So single quotes for HTML, CSS, double quotes for Sparkle, just to keep things a little bit recognizable and manageable. Now you can see that this works. So now I'm coloring all of the Pokemons according to their main color. Now we have some other properties in addition to uh, color and name. Uh, for instance, we have the image and HTML of course also has a tag for image where it has a source attribute. And then in the source attribute, we have to specify the image. So now the values of the widget column are completely empty. And the reason for that is that I'm introducing the image variable here. However, how does the image variable look like? Let me put it in the, in the table and we get a clearer view here. So I've now just added the image column in the table. And what you can see is that the image is a typed literal, or in other words, it's a literal term with an explicit data type. It's of data type any URI. So it's different from the color, which was a simple string, and the name, which was also a simple string. And while color and name can be inserted directly in the concatenation function because they are simple strings, this is not the case for the image variable. So for the image variable, I will first have to extract the simple string component, the string component from the literal, and then I can insert it in the concatenation function. This is a little bit clunky, however, Sparkle does provide a function for this, and that's the str function. The str function allows you to extract the string value from a literal term. Now, if we run this query again, like this, yeah, so now it's valid HTML. So we were able to extract the string value from the image variable and insert that into the concatenation function resulting in valid HTML. And then there's one last thing that we want to add, uh, the cry property. We haven't added that yet. In HTML, you also have this uh, audio tag. You can specify it such that it takes some, uh, some controls for playing uh, the audio. And then inside you have to specify the audio source. Let's see whether I get this right. And the same thing occurs here as with the image. For the cry variable, I also have to explicitly extract the string value from it. So that's something to be aware of here as well. And then I have to close the audio string appropriately. And of course, use quoting in the correct way. And let's see whether that worked. Yeah, seems to have worked. Okay, nice. So you see this actually works a little bit clunky. However, it is possible to uh, concatenate strings in such a way that you can create uh, relatively simple uh, HTML strings. And those HTML strings can be returned uh, directly to the application, to the user, or to some subsequent library to do some other stuff with it. Uh, so this is a way in which you can, for instance, generate uh, a gallery of, uh, of Pokemons, uh, maybe simple Pokemon cards that you could directly display inside a website. You could just directly retrieve those from a knowledge graph and immediately insert them into a, a web application. So in this episode, we introduced several functions that you can use inside the bind keyword. Uh, those functions were concat for concatenating strings, strdt for creating a literal out of a string and a data type IRI, the function str to extract the string from a typed literal, and of course also the data type RDF HTML, uh, in the application of which we reused all of those functions in order to return a standards compliant RDF HTML literal. Um, we sometimes use RDF HTML literals in order to make the results of Sparkle queries easier to show to human users. So you will see some of them coming back in, uh, in future episodes. 
Uh, also, the functions like concatenation, strdt and str are also very useful in other cases. So you'll also see them in other places as well. In the next episode, I want to focus on the projection. We've used the projection for quite a while now, but there are actually several additional features that you can use in order to play a little bit with the projection resulting in uh, changes to your table. So you can actually tweak your output table by using the projection. So let's do that next time.